This dog is brought to you by Treddy, the craziest dog you will ever play with. I'm gonna try to do this quick because I'm running late. And by late, I mean it's almost two in the morning and I wanna get the gym in before I go to bed. So on Devious Mains this week, Blanca dies. I guess all the Glee viewers are gonna stop watching now. This week's episode, although good, was not as eye-pleasing as I'd hoped, but it's for the sake of the storyline, so I understand. Otherwise, it'd just be a show of like, slow motion taking off clothes and face panning and stuff. But yeah, Rosie is not done. Remember in season one, or maybe two, how sly she was with Perry Westmore? That is not a dumb person's like, Rosie did have sexy times with Ernesto this episode, but it was not enough camera time or nakedness. Well, I finally, well, well, I'm done watching Orange is the New Black. One less show to watch. But on the bright side, Empire comes back on September 23rd. I must say, even though like Ruby Rose was everyone's girl crush, I was expecting her to have like a happy end to the season with her in it. That twist was kind of crazy. It also makes me wonder if I'm capable of such vengeance if someone like messed with me like that. Or am I like, am I like crazy enough to do such a thing? But yeah, that lake scene was a good end to this whole craziness between Piper and her business and Alex's run-in with that dude. Moving on to comics, I'm pretty much caught up with all new X-Men and now I'm kind of sad. If you are a regular watcher of TMZ, then you may have watched an episode where they asked the actor who plays Bobby Drake, also known as Iceman, whether he knew he was a gay character or not because he like played his like coming out scene of, in front of his parents about um, his mutant powers. I finally got to the issue where like that whole idea comes from, or yeah, I think that's how you would say it. Well, the issue where that happens is issue number 40. Well, in the issue, Bobby doesn't necessarily come out. It's actually Jean Grey who kind of like outs him. Hopefully, I didn't spoil it too much. It's been around for a while now. Well, the Iceman they're referring to is the Iceman from the past. Jean told Bobby to ask the Iceman from his present time whether he had like gay thoughts and whatever. Because he wasn't ever portrayed as like a gay character and he also like dated Kitty Pride for a while until they broke up. But yeah, whether or not they take that whole aspect to him into the movies, I don't know. I don't even know if he's gonna be in Apocalypse. Now I feel kind of lost knowing that the all new X-Men series is cancelled. As a result, I picked up reading A-Force and Years of Future Past out of curiosity to see whether they're good or not. There are new comics from this whole aspect of the battle world because everything else is like destroyed now, apparently. For A Force, I do love the whole like women superhero league running the whole island. It's very reminiscent of like how w Wonder Woman came about. Of course, the island that the, the A Force team protects isn't exclusively women. There's also men in it, but they're the protectors of the island is all female superheroes. I do hate the whole battle world aspect to it though because it's like Doctor Doom or at least Doctor Doom is very apparent in both Years of Future Past and A-Force that he's like the god and ruler of the entire battle world. I felt like Marvel could have created something more unique for that whole post-Secret Wars thing. And in Years of Future Past not days, so I'm not referring to the movie. Dr. Zoom also rules that world, and it's very much on the theme of that whole post-apocalyptic Earth, but in a sense that the humans have controlled or contained the mutant race. So every mutant so far has either died or is put in an, an internment camp. Which, which is one of the things I really like about like X-Men is that they take like real history and sort of bend it into their own storyline. Which is probably why I really love the first class movie. That's like my favorite X-Men movie. You should totally watch it if you haven't. Havoc. 
So far, the focus is on Kitty Pride's daughter and Wolverine's son. So Kitty Pride's daughter, Christina, is one of the last like mutants born before the president started like inducing comas on like strong mutants from the past, like Raven and the Blob. And then basically either containing their powers or creating like mutant genocide. Of course they escape and that's how the story starts developing. And in the whole Doctor Doom thing is apparent in the Sentinels because they're gonna start resembling him. Or at least one of them. I'll show over here. But yeah, so far both comics have like two issues so far so there isn't really much to go off of. Um, I'm probably gonna keep reading them out of curiosity. I'm not super intrigued on what happening so far but it gives me something to read while I'm at the gym. But I won't leave without saying something positive about Marvel's new titles. <laughs> Marvel DC, they both have their good and bads. I don't really read Vertigo but maybe if someone recommends me something that I like maybe. But what I really love so far that I randomly picked up because I thought it was so adorable, Tumblr is like the best when it comes to like just previewing stuff, is giant sized little Marvel. I think the drawings are so cute. I showed like a picture of one of those silk variant covers and I just really love that artwork. <laughs> it's so cute. Basically it's the Avengers versus the X-Men. But yeah, it's just so cute and I love all their little interactions. And after reading all new X-Men, I have a affection towards like magic. She's like one of my newfound favorite characters. I just love her and her soul sword. That's so cool to me. Reading giant sized little Marvel at the gym leaves like a smile on my face while I'm like, I'm, like on the bike like, but yeah, it's totally reminiscent or a throwback to watching the Rugrats. And if you really like watching the Rugrats, I think you would like reading Giant Size Little Marvel. But but I guess since I don't really like reading the whole Battle World series comics, I still have X-Men 92 to read. It's kind of funny in this episode because episode, I mean issue, because Rogue and Gambit have their like spotlight in that issue and Rogue has like a really sick mullet. It's not like her hair in the cartoon, it's like a huge mullet. I still have like Midnighter and Soap to read but now I don't have like a stockpile of comics to read which is like sad because it's like a huge rating game now. <sighs> well that's all I have to share for this week. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and share it. And if you would like to get connected with me elsewhere, visit my other social media sites. See you next week.